Hi, my name is Arnel Ganalo of Point Loma Nazarene University, and I'm here to present the RE poster for the virtual conference for ASB 2020. I want to acknowledge my co-authors, Kristen Nicholson of Wake Forest University and Gordy Alderink of Grand Valley State University. Now, like other multi-segment motions, uh, the baseball pitch, or more specifically, the velocity of the baseball is cr created by movements and rotations of the various segments of the entire body, what we call the kinetic chain. And we know through research that the energy flows up through the kinetic chain in a proximal to distal fashion. However, capturing that accurately has some limitations when using inverse dynamics uh, approaches. And this is because the assumptions of uh, the interactions between segments is only between adjacent segments. It doesn't address these inverse dynamic approaches do not address the direct contributions of segments that are remotely distant or far, for example, from the throwing arm. So as an alternative, an induced acceleration analysis has been used. So the purpose of this study was to examine how muscular and non-muscular torque contribute to the velocity of the ball pitch off an instrument amount, as well as to the induced power of the throwing arm. So we included a sample of 70 collegiate pitchers that were seen in the Wake Forest lab as shown here. Uh, we used a marker-based motion capture system at a sampling rate of 400 Hertz, an instrumented mound. These, this is a mound that has uh, embedded uh, AMTR force platforms uh, underneath the rubber as well as on the front side and GRF or ground reaction force data was collected at a sample rate of a thousand Hertz. Uh, ball velocity was tracked with uh, Rapsodo uh, we use a 14th segment full body um, IAA model here, 25 degrees of freedom, that was governed by the state space equation, as I showed here. All the dynamics equation was used or derived in SD FAST and implemented in Visual 3D. And then we calculated induced power using previous techniques. So taking a look at the results here, we found that the inducible velocity was mainly due to the shoulder torque as well as the velocity dependent torque. This is the Coriolis and centripetal effects of uh, segmental motion. Uh, likewise, the energy that's transferred to the throwing arm was mainly induced by the velocity dependent torque. Uh, we also found that the induced velocity underestimated the actual ball velocity by 16% and we believe it's because of limitations in the model uh, mainly the forearm and the hand and the ball segment was all defined as one rigid segment when in reality the ball more, most likely moves relative to the actual hand so future studies should address that uh, definition and may perhaps use a, a more defined distal arm segment in order to understand those that interaction there Thank you.